Here in my garage, just bought this brand new Mitsubishi here. It's fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? That's knowledge. knowledge. Um. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. It's a pleasure to have you with me here in my garage, just like Ty Lopez, except we're not gonna be talking about knowledge. Hopefully I can spread some knowledge, but we're gonna be talking about this here. This is my new, to me at least, 1995 Mitsubishi Pajero Mini. And it's a right-hand drive Japanese spec K car. But before we get into this episode, I gotta thank KAK Industry for being the channel sponsor for Print Shit Repeat. KAK Industry is my favorite. And why is that? Well, they support me obviously, but they also really support 3D printing and DIY stuff, which I think is awesome. In addition to that, KAK makes some of the best quality AR parts around for not that much money. If you're curious and you wanna check them out, I would never suggest going to their website, which I can't list here. Absolutely would never suggest you use the code PSR for 10% off your entire order at KAK Industry. Cheers, KAK. So I want you to think back long and hard. If you were alive, maybe you weren't. 1995, that was a long time ago. And it gives you an idea of just how old this car is. In 1995, Forrest Gump won Best Picture at the Oscars. The 49ers won the Super Bowl. The Atlanta Braves won the World Series. The Backstreet Boys were popular. You had Coolio, Madonna, Janet Jackson. Starbucks had just introduced the Frappuccino. A whole loaf of bread was 99 cents, and the cost of a dozen eggs was $1.19. The assault weapons ban was just a year old. O.J. Simpson got acquitted in 1995, and the war in the Balkans came to an end. If you didn't remember any of that stuff, congrats, you're not a millennial. You are probably either a Zoomer or even younger. But for those who were alive during that time, probably very young, that's when this car came out. Now when we talk about my dream car, I'm not like everyone else. I love sports cars, I love anything that goes fast, obviously. I love motorcycles as well. <laughs> But there's something about a tiny SUV like this one that just wets my whistle. Real nice. Cute, small SUV four-wheel drive that is quirky and interesting, and this checks all of the boxes. Now, a little bit of background on the Pajero Mini. Pajero, the translation in Spanish, is actually a slang term for wanker, or one who masturbates all day. And I wonder if the Japanese marketing people at Mitsubishi intended for that to be a troll, or if they just didn't know what it meant. Needless to say, that is pretty funny. Now, if you're at all familiar with Mitsubishi in the 90s, there were a few popular cars. There were the Pajeros, but they were never sold here. They were sold here as Monteros. Introducing the all new Mitsubishi Montero. The word is getting around. And that was the full size 
Mitsubishi SUVs, and you see occasionally them on the streets here today in the US, but they're kind of dwindling. You don't really see them very often, but when I do, I kind of like them. People do use them as technicals from time to time. Mitsubishi sells trucks too, uh, but they just never sold a pickup truck here other than the Mighty Max, which was a long time ago. They sell Mitsubishi Tritons, which are like the Tacoma or the Hilux. They sell those in Australia, and I actually saw some when I went down to Australia to visit my sister. And the Mitsubishi Tritons from the 90s are really cool looking trucks. I'll try to find a photo and show you here. So Mitsubishi was definitely on one in the 90s. They had the Eclipse, the 3000 GT, a bunch of really cool cars. And then as the 2000s progressed, everything just got super boring. And now all they do is sell crossovers and extremely boring cars here. The US is a very competitive market. And unfortunately, Mitsubishi really just has not come out with anything exciting in the last 15 years, really. Now, Mitsubishi has always made some really cool cars, but they just didn't sell them here. Now, the only real way to get some of these cool cars from the 90s from Mitsubishi or other Japanese brands is to import them from Japan. You can certainly do it yourself, but it is a little bit of a hassle, not to mention costs a lot to ship them over here. But the main barrier that prevents us from getting cool Japanese cars is the 25-year import rule. That's a stupid, archaic rule that has been existing in the United States for a while that prevents us from importing any car that's newer than 25 years old into this country. Canada actually has an import law, but it's only 15 years, so they get to go 2008 and up now, they can import, whereas we are stuck with 1998 and up. And obviously, every year that goes by, you get another year added, so we're going on 1999 in a short while here. So basically, almost a classic car, essentially, by the time you can import it here. So there's a little bit of background on the importing stuff. To get back to this particular car, when I sold my Toyota Tundra and I got my 4Runner, I saved the money that I sold from the Tundra and I wanted to find a K car like this. Now, you might be asking, what is a K car? Well, a K car is a special class of car that's only sold in Japan and it's made to fit these certain tax regulations that the Japanese government put in. It's an incentive to get people to drive smaller cars so there's less congestion in cities and there's not as much pollution. K cars have to be a certain size and they also have to have a certain engine displacement which is no greater than 660 cc's. So you find a lot of these cars trying to maximize power with turbochargers and this one has one. Now the coolest part about this vehicle, I think, is its engine, which is not very typical for these K vehicles. Of course, it does have to meet the 660cc limit, which it is. The competitor to this vehicle, the Jimny, it has a three-cylinder turbo, and most of the K vehicles have three-cylinder turbos or three cylinders, whereas this has four cylinders. It's an inline four-cylinder dual overhead cam five valves per cylinder engine. It is a bit of a unicorn when it comes to these K vehicles. So I should mention this is a five speed manual. They did sell them in automatic, but I just had to get a manual. The other thing that's cool about this thing is it's pretty much all factory. Even the radio is factory, which came from Japan. So the FM frequency is all different than ours. So you can't get any radio signals in it, which is kind of funny. Now in front, these are OEM fog lights. We've got the Mitsubishi logo there on the front and this kind of like bull bar type setup. Now this does have a factory skid plate on it, which is kind of cool. And this little mirror here is actually a thing that in Japan, all vehicles have pretty much. I don't know if they still have them, but it's basically so you don't curb rash your wheels when you're parking and you know exactly where you are up against the curb, which I think is quite helpful. Also, as you can see here, there is a hood scoop, which is actually a functional hood scoop, unlike the 4Runner. This is a pathway to get air into the engine, and there's an intercooler sitting right below it. And I think that's pretty cool. As far as the power numbers on this thing, it makes around 63, 64 horsepower at the crank. At the wheels, I think it's probably maybe 44-ish, 45. Not a lot of power, but this does only weigh 1,800 pounds. It is absolutely tiny. I'll show you some video of it next to my 4Runner and you'll just see how small it is. It is absolutely minuscule. And when you're driving by big pickup trucks, you just try not to imagine what would happen if a collision happened. The wanker would become wankless, so to speak, if this got into an accident. I almost forgot, arguably the most important feature and the coolest thing about this vehicle is that it's four wheel drive and it's got the old school manual transfer case with four high, four low and two high, of course. This thing actually, from the videos that I've seen online, can shred off-road. Yeah! <laughs> and 
handle some pretty insane obstacles. You just really need to have off-road tires and a little bit beefier tires. Some people do lift these things up with spring lifts or spacer lifts. I'll probably hold off on that for now, but eventually that would be sweet. Doors make kind of a ding sound when you close them. They are very chintzy. Everything feels like you're in a little tin box. Call me weird, but I just love that. Now this does have rear seats. They are tiny. There's not a whole lot of room back there for your rear occupants if you were to unfortunately bring people in the back. I do fit because I'm a small guy, but I don't think a large adult would fit in the back. Now the front seats are actually quite spacious. And that's the thing with a lot of these K vehicles is the passenger compartments are actually kind of spacious and they do have quite a bit of headroom. I am short guy and I have lots of room, definitely many inches of room. As far as the interior goes, it is extremely minimal and very 90s with the trim on the seats having this weird kind of mixture of purple and gray. And it doesn't even have that same pattern in the back seat, which I find is funny. It is very charming and it reminds you of what era this vehicle was produced in. And I think that's cool. As far as features go on the interior, it does have AC and the AC actually works. It gets the cabin pretty cool pretty fast because it's such a small area. Now this also does have power windows and the power windows actually have a auto up and down feature for the driver. So that's pretty nifty. So a lot of the K cars look kind of weird because the passenger compartments are just so big to accommodate people. But this looks just right in terms of the proportions in my opinion. One of the most funny things about this vehicle is how tiny the wheels are. The wheels are a 175 width tire, which is basically less than a lot of motorcycle tires. My R6, back when I did a lot of track days, had a 180 width tire, which is wider than these tires. So that's one thing that I do plan on switching out is putting bigger wheels and tires on here. I probably won't change the diameter of the wheels, which are 15s, but I definitely will get some meatier, beefier tires on here to kind of increase its road presence because it does look a little dinky, although it is very charming. Another added bonus to having such a small vehicle is that I actually look like a normal sized man when standing next to this thing. I might even look slightly above average height. All you guys driving giant lifted pickup trucks, you look like manlets next to them. I, meanwhile, look like a normal sized man standing next to this tiny vehicle. So what are my driving impressions of this vehicle exactly? Well, it is so much fun shifting through the gears and hearing the turbo sounds on this. I mounted the lavalier mic inside the engine bay and I captured the sounds and just listened to the sound of this thing. Ripping through the gears, you're hearing the turbo, you're shifting and it's going as you shift. It is complete ecstasy and you're only going maybe 40 miles an hour and you feel like you're doing 90. That is driving the Pajero Mini. As far as the handling goes, of course, it's not great. It's very vague. There's not a lot of feeling. And when you turn the wheel and you're going like past 50 miles an hour, it kind of surprises you how much you need to turn the wheel in order to get around the corner. So it definitely takes some getting used to, but I feel like this is a symptom of a lot of 90s vehicles. Now this thing does not have airbags. This thing does not have anti-lock brakes. So it is pretty much bare bones as far as tech goes inside a car. And one of the reasons why I wanted to get this car, in addition to it being like my dream car and something I love to drive, I also wanted to get better at learning how a car works. And I thought something very simple like this would be a good way to get into that. Now I went to a friend of mine's place and we already swapped the radio. So I got a Sony head unit in there, but the goal is to eventually get some speakers and a subwoofer in here because the speakers are entirely shot. It basically sounds like one of those bass boosted like jump scare videos that you're cycling through Instagram or TikTok, and then all of a sudden there's just a massive amount of distortion and bass. Yeah. That's this, but anytime you turn the radio on. Now the color, I'm not like a giant in love with blue guy, but I'm, I'm coming around to it. It kind of sometimes looks a little bit purplish in certain light. I'm more of like a red, gray, 
silver black kind of dude, but it is what it is. There's not a whole lot of these in the country. And the paint is fading in certain spots. There are a couple of clear coat spots and there's definitely clear coat is just shot on the roof, which is very typical for these. But maybe I'll get it wrapped at some point, but right now the priority is new fluids, coolant flush, making sure everything's running right. There's a super small oil leak, but it is very, very minuscule, but I'm just keeping an eye on that as well. The clutch will probably have to be replaced at some point and also the timing belt. So this is going to be kind of an ongoing little project. Uh, it does run and drive great right now, uh, no issues, but those are things that I probably need to keep in mind and getting parts for these is not the easiest. You can order them from Japan. They just take a long time to get here. It's not like you're gonna go to AutoZone and find a part for this thing. Although the oil filter is the same as a smart car one. So the first upgrade that I'll do to it is probably tires and wheels. Definitely want to get some chunkier tires on there. And I've seen people put 235 with tires on here. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can fit those on here. That will be a future episode. So I hope you enjoyed this little video about my Pajero Mini. I know it's not 3D printing content, it's not gun content. It seemed like you guys liked the video I did on my 4Runner. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thank you for watching the video and thank you for liking and thank you for subscribing. It really goes a long way and helps me with the algorithm. And if you've been unsubscribed by YouTube, Go tell them they can f themselves. If you want more content from the Pajero Mini, please let me know. I'm thinking about maybe starting a second channel that's just for car stuff. That way I can actually monetize the videos in addition to all the demonetized ones that get put up here. If you want me to start another channel and focus more on this car content as well as obviously the main PSR content, please let me know as well because I'm considering doing it, but if no one wants to watch this, then probably won't. So let me know if you would like to see that. And once again, thank you guys for watching the video. Until next time, PSR out. I feel so big and tall when I'm inside one of these You wanna be my wanker, wanna be my wanker, wanna be my wanker Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs>